Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're calling in from today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Dave Miller, president here at EMAM, and I'm excited to um, offer this webinar and show some of the different ways some, our clients worldwide are setting up EMAM and, and you know, make it, configuring it and make it work for their particular workflow needs. So it's, you know, this is just a sampling and, and of course we can support different different workflows, different configurations, but i um, very excited to, to, to share with you some of the different ways customers use the system. Um, presenting today is, is my colleague Chuck Bulo, and um, let me turn it over to him. Uh, if you have questions, you can put it in the chat. We will record today's session, so if you want a copy and or the slide deck, let us know. Happy to share that with you. Um, if not, with no further ado, uh, let me turn it over to Chuck. Thanks so much. All right, thanks, David. So we'll go over some of the ideas of uh, using the workflow uh, engine base uh, that's built into the EMAM platform and uh, kind of how, you know, give you some ideas on how some of our clients are actually using these different types of workflows. Uh, but really the, the goal here is to kind of spell out how we offer kind of a menu-driven platform for uh, building workflows and so on. So you're not necessarily having to come back to us and come in and help uh, have us program and so on. Um, you know, different types of workflows that may help you in a day-to-day -day operation. Um, but uh, to kind of go through, we'll go through a number of slides here um, and kind of show you what the tools look like and then how they're used and so on. And then of course, as David said, if you have any questions during the process, we'll uh, answer those right at the end of the uh, uh, presentation. All right, so with uh, EMAM, um, again, if you're not familiar with the EMAM platform, we are a media asset management system. So we acquire media um, and that could be live, that could be file-based, um, could be through API calls, uh, XML and various ways of delivering media through Adobe um, Panel, um, also upload into the EMAM system. We organize the content into uh, categories and then apply those uh, permission levels to those categories. So then controlling what people can see and do within the platform. And then of course, also we connect with Adobe Premiere, um, After Effects and Design, um, Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, so the different um, panels are integrated with those. So editors can actually see into the email system and then grab content use that content, manage uh, projects and so on within this uh, email platform. We also have an extension for Final Cut Pro. And then with Avid, we actually didn't do deliver and, and import um, media back and forth in between an Avid system. Um, we do collaboration, sharing, approving, um, sharing content with in internal and external users, uh, package up delivery with using transcoders to package up different types of content in different formats. And then, of course, also archive that media for uh, retrieval at a later time. So, um, whoops, went a little too far there. Um, so, really, the idea behind our workflow engine is to simplify your daily process um, operations and throw uh, uh, through you know automation. So, being able to then provide you with tools that's easy to set up and then kind of whiteboard out the process. Um, build in using, you know, build the workflows using the menu-driven workflow uh, automation system, and then making it a little bit easier for end-user adoption um, using the system. So things like, you know, changing a custom uh, metadata field to yes or no or delivery or ready for delivery, and, and then have that uh, um, basically perform an action behind the scenes and so on that the user doesn't have to manually process media uh, but it can be more of an automated process. So the idea really here is with the tools, being able to kind of um, go through a menu-driven system, build the workflows, implement those, and then manage those, of course, as well through the system. Um, so the different types of things, you know, well, uh, with the workflows, you know, file-based workflows, live uh, streaming captures, ingesting, and then, of course, managing lifecycle uh, workflows as well. <laughs> excuse me, with like raw content coming in, being produced and then brought in and, uh, you know, utilizing uh, metadata fields and so on to kind of uh, update status of media and then be able to manage the process all the way through. 
integrations with transcoders, uh, being able to produce and collaborate, um, you know, and build custom delivery um, profiles, meaning that I could take a transcoder like a Vantage or an Elemental or FFmpeg or Drastic um, uh, Capella as well and others that uh, then I can package up the content. Um, a TAM is one where we package up content with multiple tracks of audio um, and uh, also caption files and then be able to deliver those in different formats. And then of course, any kind of custom archiving profiles that then go right to LTO or to cloud or spinning disk as well. Um, you know, and also different types of tasks, task management, um, rights management with notifications and so on, setting different permission levels for assets and projects as, as well. We can manage all that process all through the automation uh, built into the system. And of course, all the different types of custom workflows you wanna build uh, there as well. And also really what's really nice about the system is the interface itself is also customizable. So the users can be um, have a very simplistic layout for processing media or editors and producers or others can actually have a little bit more, more of a complex uh, uh, interface and so on. So you can keep it simple or go complex. It's, it's either way, uh, it's kind of up to you and how you process that. So some of the simple ways of doing um, different types of workflows that we do on a daily basis for most of our clients, you know, streaming the onboard process, being able to use a drag and drop interface or web interface or even our application like Peter, being able to just drag and drop files, uh, bringing those in and have them default into some kind of um, category or maybe like a quarantine media category, um, assign a metadata set of uh, metadata fields and so on that could be then uh, required to fill in before it's ingested. And then of course, so maybe apply it to a project. And then uh, in this case here, like in this little uh, screenshot, uh, you know, I can have it archive immediately just for backup you know, and so on. So these are the type of standard workflows that we have like on the ingest side um, and so on. We also then organize that media. Now, a lot of our clients, what they'll do is they'll utilize that ingest uh, profile to be able to then ingest maybe a folder structure that they already have. And so what that does happens is um, during the ingest process, they upload a folder and subfolders, and it automatically creates these profile or these categories. And with that, then be able to build your category structure. And then uh, it makes it then a lot easier to go back and then find that content that you're looking for. A lot of our clients do it based on projects or events and so on, and then they apply the assets to those, assign them to those categories. And then each one of these categories then can have their own private uh, permission levels or set of permission levels to say who gets to see this category um, all the way down, even into the subfolders, or just maybe one layer um, of a subfolder or a major folder there. Um, global tagging, this is a really key for us as well. You're able to go in and tag the media on ingest. You can tag the media later after it's been ingested and globally tag a group of, of assets and so on. Um, you can even import metadata as well through a, a spreadsheet, various things like that. And we also have AI tagging, <coughs> excuse me, um, AI tagging where we use services like Amazon um, and uh, Microsoft, Google and others that uh, actually automatically tag this, the uh, media that you have like images or even videos as well doing speech to text facial recognition and so on annotations branding uh, keywords and and so on that information through that service which is an extra charge but um, automatically tags all your media in an automated fashion so you can either select um, all media that come into the system or individually files select those to be processed uh, through the ai services and again, we can build in workflows where you could uh, go ahead and select a number of assets to be processed or just one or two assets. It's really up to you and how that workflow works for you. Um, we also manage uh, through the panels um, and also other workflows uh, built into the system to manage um, the creative uh, suite of pro um, projects from Adobe. So like Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, 
um, After Effects and so on. We'll manage all of those projects. Um, and then through workflows with those projects, we can also send notification or do task management um, through uh, metadata fields and so on and assign users specifically to projects and then be able to um, notify them that there's a new project already started and new media is available for them to go ahead and check out the thing, you know, the, the project and of course all the media associated with that. And then also the system does maintain all the different versions of those projects as well. So again, all the different projects uh, management. Um, and again, this is all custom. So everything that you have uh, seen here so far, this is all menu driven, um, but it's all custom, you know, uh, development by you and, you know, using the menu driven uh, system through email to be able to uh, build that. Um, we do a lot of collaboration as well. So there's eShare where you can actually um, take a project, take a sequence, create a proxy view of that, let's say as an example, and then put it up into an eShare or review and approve where comments are applied. Also sub clipping can be done or markers or even annotation for internal, internal users. Um, but now of course with uh, Adobe owning uh, Frame.io, we also collaborate through Frame.io as well. So you can take any one of your sequences, upload that to uh, Frame.io, and then through Frame.io and say Adobe Premiere, you're able to then uh, collaborate with other users and so on and share comments and, and so on, and then uh, make annotations, various things uh, through Frame.io as well. So that's also, also built in. Now, based on a lot of the workflows that we have, we utilize third-party transcoders. So this is really, really important that the users go in or customers go in and they uh, basically review some of the formats that are supported by a lot of these different transcode companies. And so we're able to then with an API integration directly with these um, transcoders, we're able to then build workflows say on ingest or on delivery to package up and process that media. Um, some of the, the key things we'll talk about like today of, of um, taking audio files and um, are the audio tracks of a video, extracting those and then maybe even delivering those to say Pro Tools and then having through a workflow, be able to embed the new and updated audio track back into the, um, uh, into the video file and then be able to process that as a package uh, there as well. Just to kind of give you an idea of what we can do uh, through these transcoders like Telestream as well. They have many options where you can run it out to QC and come back. Um, you can process media and package up media. Atem does a lot of packaging as well, where we could pass on individual files like the video file, multiple audio tracks, multiple caption, and then bugs and things like that and give it to Atem and then have them package it up through their templates that they have as well. Um, Elemental as well, we do packaging through them where you can actually even do uh, stitch and deliver, um, where if you use our rough cut editor built into the EMAM system, you can actually uh, put onto a single track, uh, maybe a head with a promo in the, in the beginning, a uh, couple of highlights clips, and then maybe a promo at the end, and then Elemental can package it up as well as FFmpeg, and then deliver that as a new asset um, out to wherever you'd like it to go. But a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we do and the workflows we do all also center around the different transcoders. Now the other key thing about EMAM is we can manage multiple transcoders, and so in some cases um, someone will use FFmpeg, but then maybe they don't support a particular codec. We'll bring in Drastic or Telestream or Capella, um, and then utilize them on specific workflows to say process certain media in a certain fashion because they support the format that's required on the outbound side let's say um, so a lot of things to, to consider here on the transcoding side so we can kind of help you out with that okay so this is kind of how um, things look here with the workflow tools now the administrators of the system this is either unit uh, admins or uh, what we call super admins through our super admin interface, there's a selection there, a tab called workflow. And the workflow tools give you the ability through a menu, not so much having us help you program with code and XMLs and all sorts of things and JSONs and all this kind of thing. You can actually go through 
a menu-driven workflow designer that then helps you build these workflows based on events. Um, and we'll, we'll go through each one of these based on the event that happens, uh, conditions that are set that you want uh, to meet first before you go on and then produce an action. And then on the actions, you can actually stack up those actions. Um, so let's say that on ingest, I want to notify somebody that, um, you know, a new asset has come in, a new video asset, and I'm going to send them an email or send them a text message or maybe even send something out to Slack. Um, I'd not notify somebody through Slack or Teams. These are the type of things that you can do within the email system and through the workflow. And anybody can do it if we, <coughs> excuse me, if we train them and then be able to go through and, and walk them through what's required to build that workflow. All right, so the very first thing that is, um, that happens is to ingest uh, on an, on, I'm sorry, an event type. So the very top part, it's it's called event type, and under that is ingest is the first one. And so with ingest, um, then I can go in and say on ingest, that's a video, I'm going to send a notification and so on. Um, with, um, with custom metadata changes, for example, if someone selects custom metadata change and um, says ready for review or ready for distribution, that then, uh, and it's a video, then we can also create an, an action to say, uh, go ahead and deliver that media there as well. Um, there's also scheduled dates as well. So scheduler means that I can actually go in and when the server meets a certain date, and meets a certain condition, that, like maybe a video is ready for distribution um, or uh, rights management, <laughs> excuse me, rights management has ended and you can actually then um, trigger that to move the asset from one category to another that's maybe in quarantine. Um, so again, it's a scheduled date, um, metadata field that you put in. I'll put in a date like an error date, let's say, that's on this Friday at eight o'clock. So on Thursday night at midnight, I want to move that over to uh, a playout server. And so I can make that uh, action happen through that scheduled date. Asset info change, if you know the asset's been moved, um, in, any information about the um, title or description uh, information, if any of that changes and the condition is met, then I can make an action there as well. We also have buttons that are metadata clicks. So we actually have a button you can push to trigger an action, like maybe run a QC app on a local workstation or QC on, based on a server. Uh, we can do that as well. And then of course, cloud upload, um, with that cloud upload being able to, once it's complete, um, then I can move that up. Um, and once it's complete, maybe make a notification that it's been uploaded to the cloud, let's say. Um, but again, a lot of this is all built on this menu driven um, sections here. So on the condition side, so again, there's the event that happens, whatever that might be, then conditions have to be met. So there's a field and the fields are typically your embedded metadata information, file uh, properties information, uh, custom metadata fields and so on. If that field has equals, not equals, between, greater than, less than, let's say like you're, you're getting a date um, of media. So you're looking for media that's been ingested or ready for delivery from this date to this date and anything in between, then I want you to do an action like maybe delivery um, or update um, uh, metadata field and things like that. So there's an operator, which is equal, not equal, between, greater than, and so on. And then there's a course of value to that. And then you can start stacking up the different conditions. Now, one way um, to use, say, rights management before you deliver or have the system automatically deliver media, you could have it then check also if it's under contract for rights management, let's say. And so before it's a, a video, it's on an air date, it's met that air date, and the rights management says we are good to go for a contract, um, then the action would be, say, delivery um, and so on. So that's kind of how you can start stacking up those conditions there as well, all based on a menu here. And then, of course, on the action side, um, we have many options here. So on the action side, 
you basically can go in and say, um, you know, for delivery would be one. Again, event happens, maybe a metadata change, conditions are right, and then the action is deliver. And these could be any one of our predefined delivery profiles. And so those delivery profiles could be, you know, deliver as a package, video, audio, and, and subtitles, uh, package those up and deliver them to one, two, or three locations, um, and so on. Also under arc, whoops, under archive. Um, so under archive, um, you're able to then, um, you know, uh, take archive and, um, you know, archive the media. If a certain date is met, like after 30 days, um, the um, media has been, you know, uh, ready to go for archive, a date is met, it'll go into archive. Um, change metadata, again, if somebody changes a metadata field, an action can happen there as well. Notify, purge, you know, manage category. Um, manage category is actually moving an asset from one category to the next. And then manage projects are add this media that comes in based on ingest and it's from this profile. We know it's part of this project, add or assign it to this project. Um, the AI tagging is actually something where um, the AI tagging goes and runs through um, that process for the AI services, and then they feed us back then that uh, speech to text and facial recognition and so on. And then of course also if somebody does need to create a proxy, a lot of our clients actually just ingest media without a proxy and then at some point, point in time they'll use the transcoder to go ahead and create a proxy to that as well. Okay. Um, you can also start stacking up the media um, or stacking up the actions as well. So let's say that you um, change a metadata field that says it's ready for delivery. The conditions are met that, you know, it's a video, it's got rights management, it's ready for delivery and so on. I could set up a delivery profile to go ahead and deliver to cable or broadcast or VOD, whatever it might be. Um, also then I could send a notification that the media is has been delivered. So the action first would be deliver it. And when that passes, then go ahead and notify me uh, via email that it's been delivered. That's just one example of what we can do, but you can start stacking up multiple, um, multiple deliveries or multiple notifications, uh, changes to metadata and so on. So again, all of this is all through a menu driven uh, system. Now, so with those workflows running, you'll always want to have a dashboard uh, to view live feedbacks and so on. So those feedbacks now are, you know, did it, did it complete? Okay, and if it did complete, at what time did it complete? It started at a certain time, the workflow name, the name of the file and so on, and then the status. So if it does have a problem, there will be a notification here, like, you know, at the bottom here, this shows red. And so that did not complete. And so with that, then um, you can go back and, and check the system, check the dashboard on that particular asset. Um, maybe a server is down or a transcoder is not able to send a notification or one of the servers is not. You can then go ahead and resubmit the job as well um, and then uh, process and, and have it complete. Uh, there as well. But this gives you kind of a live update of exactly what's going on with all your different workflows um, there. So let's get into some specifics on some of our clients and what they're doing. So we have one client up in Canada, um, Yes TV, that they use the EMAM system to um, do studio live recordings. They have field ingest. Um, they can also edit while capture if they'd like to. Um, so uh, this is one workflow we've done with them where it's automatically triggering, scheduling, triggering then uh, the capture. Um, the media does come in into the EMAP system. They organize the media. They start doing uh, Adobe Premiere edits and so on. They also have the ability to extract out the audio and then send that off for process, <coughs> excuse me, for processing and then uh, taking captions for processing as well. And then they have television shows. So these have segments of, of a show. So like a half hour show may have three or four segments. And so within the EMAM system, we have a workflow where we uh, tag that segment and put time code and say from this point to this point is one segment and then play ads. 
and then segment two starts. And so they can build that workflow inside that. And on the delivery of the media, um, in the second column to, on the right, from the end on the right, um, that we actually create then a BXF file uh, that sends that off to automation with just that segmentation, just to give you an example. Um, they haven't quite set up all their LTO library archives and things like that, but they will be doing that. And then, of course, they use drastic technologies for um, all of their transcoding and packaging and so on. So lots of different workflows that they have here. Euros uh, does the same. Um, so what they're doing now is they actually take a predefined naming convention, extract the, extract the metadata, um, and put that or extract that information, put it into metadata fields, organize all their audio tracks and subtitling and so on. They do packaging uh, within their workflows um, of the media, and then of course package and deliver that to various locations and various packages and, and formats there as well. And so this is kind of an example of what they would look like, um, you know, for their naming convention, uh, for the files that come in, we extract then all of this information, put that into metadata fields and then use that during the processing you know, of the media. Um, Spectrum Reach, um, one of our cable companies that uh, uses all cloud, um, they actually do field ingest through Signiant uh, workflows and uploading through the um, uh, Adobe Premiere um, panel. And then through that, then they organize all the media. They actually start projects through Salesforce and then through Salesforce, it creates a project. It assigns all the projects to um, all the media and so on to the projects and then notify the uh, users that they're able to now then start editing that content. They complete and package up the media. Um, they do an offline MES edit uh, first and then they uh, do their finishing. They'll do review and approve uh, workflows all within the uh, MAM system there. And then of course, then deliver those packages as well. Um, they haven't quite set up all their archive in, in there, but we do, uh, we'll have available for them, you know, API integration with the LTO library systems. But the idea really here is for them is they take that based on regions um, through Salesforce, create a project, and then put that project inside of, um, each one of the regions and locations. And then of course they start assign assigning all the media. And of course on the on the right hand side there, you'll see the projects that are assigned to that um, uh, to that media there as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then all the metadata is all custom. All that metadata comes in from outside sources. Um, they also have some uh, predefined um, metadata fields that they have to have uh, when they actually upload the media and fill in that information. So that also comes in. But again, all this metadata field uh, structure here is custom um, on how they want to lay it out. And it's quite simple through a menu. Uh, you're able to kind of build your own structure of um, the metadata fields. And then with those, those also trigger those different workflows that we talked about earlier. So quite, uh, quite nice to be able to easily build those workflows um, as well. Um, we also have, like with Vivo, they have a lot of uh, L existing LTO and um, uh, tapes and so on with media that they need to then migrate over into Azure Blob. And so we've actually built on workflows to actually take all of that, put it into a very, very low cost uh, storage location and safe location for them to um, you know, migrate all their data over there and then be able to then search within the EMAP system, find the content and download as needed. Um, so, and again, they have the same type of structure where different types of shows and so on, seasons um, and, um, you know, different shows and episodes and things like that. They use our category structure um, plus our custom metadata fields and so on. Um, and then, of course, also through uh, the asset matrix uh, system within the EMAM system, we can kind of manage all the content, how many files are in each of the storage locations just to kind of manage and see where we stand, um, you know, where they stand with uh, all what's up in the cloud and then of course what's local and so on. So on the email system, that workflow designer is built into all of our um, bundled packages uh, for the license. So from left to right, um, very simple. If you're looking just to archive media, create some workflows for ingest and then sharing content and of course downloading content. Uh, we can manage all that through the vault system. Um, that then manages local, <laughs> excuse me, local content um, on LTO or up in the cloud as well. 
publish is something where it adds also um, the ability to kind of share and deliver to social media and different types of platforms and so on. Um, going over to the work group side, that adds uh, on top of all of that, that adds the um, ability to do production management through say Adobe or Final Cut. And, uh, and then enterprise is more of a higher end level uh, we're having multiple servers with backup and, and failover and various things like that. All of these packages, it kind of depends on what feature sets you're looking for and then being able to then go in and choose which one. And then from there, um, you know, being able to say, do I want to run it in the cloud? Do I want to run it in the hybrid mode um, or all on-prem? So it's kind of up to you. We're very, very flexible in that. We don't include the transcoders we spoke of. So again, those are separate purchases that you would have to make. Um, but again, we work with those uh, different transcoders and so on. Okay, so with that, I think we've spilled our guts here and told you about everything or most everything. Um, Dave, I'll turn it over back over to you if you have any questions. Yeah, great, th great. Thanks so much, Chuck. Uh, a lot of exciting, really cool stuff. Um, uh, if anybody has questions, put them in the question or chat window, um, and we can send a recording of this and or the PowerPoint if you if you like. Um, from our perspective, we're really focused on offering a lot of menu-driven configuration items, not customizations. Um, so, you know, the, the system can stay online and it really minimizes for the customer their, their long-term cost of ownership for the system. And, and putting them in control is, is really setting them up and, um, you know, they can make changes as, as they like. So Eros has uh, 2,000 delivery profiles and they're always making new ones because, you know, they're their, their users, their customers want different languages, different delivery packages, everything else. So, um, but happy to talk about any of those um, we presented or, you know, have a separate conversation um, about how we can help with uh, another particular um, workflow. Um, looks like a lot of these we answered already. Um, we'll be next month at, there's a summit in New York for uh, Amazon, AWS, and then we will be at Amsterdam soon enough this fall in uh, at IBC. So hopefully we can see you or your, you know, your colleagues there. Um, and I don't see any more coming in that we didn't address already. Um, give, give everybody a, a, another minute to um, ask any questions they may have. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, I think these were all, you know, I think everything we, we covered in the presentation, but happy to have an offline discussion. And I wanted to thank everybody for their time today. Um, you know, and, uh, we're very happy to share kind of all the different, op some of the different options we've incorporated with, with some of our, our real customers. Um, but thanks so much and have a great day. Take care. Learn more at eMemSolutions.com or eMemCloud.com.